Hey, it's Tom, and today I would like to talk with you about code reviews. Actually, I would like to share a few tips which should help you as a reviewer and make those reviews really helpful also for people who request them. Okay, let's start. First and foremost, don't do code reviews when you have a bad day. Really, when you feel this is not a good time, let know the person who requested pull request that you will do it later because you are busy right now or simply too tired to correctly focus on the code. We are just humans. It's better to postpone it than regret it later. When you're stressed or angry, it may really impact your review and actually cause you will be more likely to hurt someone than provide a proper and valuable feedback. Kind code reviews even rejects with some valuable feedback are simply more helpful as they cause the requester not to feel personally attacked. In addition to that whole point, I can say that uh, it's also worth not doing the code review for too long, as it's exhausting for a lot of people, for most of people probably. So even if you start it in a good mood, uh, after let's say two hours, you might be completely out of empathy and it will be horrible for both sides. Now, from the technical perspective, it's really worth preparing a personal checklist, which will help you not forget about all the things you should check during the code review. In the case of every type of developer, this list might be different, that's obvious. But after a few review, reviewed PRs, you will definitely find a couple of areas or topics which should be always checked. There are some obvious topics like solid principles, readability, security, tests, but for some devs, there might be less obvious things that should be considered. For example, in mobile projects, I always try to check if the change will correctly work if the user will not grant a demanded privilege or leave the app in the middle of the expected flow uh, or simply turn off the phone or lose the connection. Because of uh, there are multiple reasons it may happen and it's very specific to mobile apps. Your project probably also has some platform-specific things that you, you are aware of and you should be always thinking about them. Another important tip in my opinion is to try to understand the whole idea of PR before you go into the details. Some solutions, which, which may look weird when separated, may make way more sense if you understand the whole solution. Uh, maybe it will turn out that requester did not have a chance to and to do it in a different way and that's actually the best possible solution even if it looks really weird. Talking about some small weird things, this is not a strict code review tip but nowadays you can automate a lot of things and it's definitely worth doing. Different languages provide different tools, but in most cases you can at least run some lint checks which will quickly catch some easy to fix issues. Uh, that can be, that things can be fixed even before the proper code review request. This will save time for both you and the requester. If your CI is able to run tests or for example compile and check the syntax, then it will definitely make everyone even happier and save everyone a lot of time. By the way, try to not focus only on the code. Think about the big picture. How urgent is the change done in this pull request? Whether is it only a hotfix or a big change that may impact the whole code base? What about time to release? Do you still have time to eventually optimize it or should you simply deliver as soon as possible? Different situations demand a different approach and programming demands also being flexible sometimes. Maybe not, in, not some sometimes, but constantly. The next important thing to keep in mind is to remember that code review's most important goal, of course, is to make sure the solution is correct. But PR should also be a source of knowledge for the requester. Unless it's just a one-liner or simply hotfix, Try to think about possible improvements and solutions which quickly come to your mind, because you're probably more experienced than the requester, and mention them. So next time this coder can think about those things and simply write a better code. Don't simply mark what's wrong, put some effort to explain why and eventually how it can be improved. You will definitely devote, devote more your time to this review, but maybe you will save 
way more time reviewing the next PRs of this developer for upcoming months or even years. Last but not least, don't forget to notice good things. The goal of the review is to find imperfections in the code, but don't limit yourself to commenting on what's wrong. Try to appreciate good solutions and mention them in the comments. This will definitely reduce tension between you and the requester. Don't be afraid to admit that some solution is really great and you didn't even think it can be done this way. Ok, I think I've shared with you all my thoughts about cold reviews and I really hope those tips will help you make cold reviews less painful. If you have some observations which I forgot about, feel free to share them in the comment section below the video. That's it, thank you for watching and see you next time, bye!